Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. I'm finally reviewing this knife. I don't know how many times I've written up the uh, worksheet for this, and then I misplaced the worksheet, and then I didn't do the review, and well, I'm doing it now. So here it comes. This is the CT Smart uh, Model CT-1. I don't know, is this their best knife? If it is, uh, well... <laughs> You'll find out what I think of it in just a little while, as long as you keep on watching. It comes in four different colors of G10. It's got a nice uh, steel liner. It's a liner lock knife. Uh, small backspacer, functionally equivalent of an open pillar construction, basically, because you've got a huge open area back here. A, uh, you know, long, thin, sort of Quaken-esque kind of knife. Uh, gentle flipper. It's actually a very small kind of flipper tab. I'll give you a close-up of that. And it flips quite well. It's got uh, roller bearings in, not roller bearings. It's got ball bearings in there. We've got a hollow grind blade. They don't tell us what kind of steel this blade is. And uh, you know, nice placement for the lanyard hole. So this knife's got some positive things, some negative things, and some unknown things. So stick around for the full review of this knife by CT Smart coming at you right now. First off, this is the one that they're calling uh, Jade White G10. You can also get it in black, orange, and what they call khaki. Right now, as long as I post this quickly after editing, the white is on sale for uh, $12 US. Uh, the black is, I don't know, 13 or $14. And the other two colors are around sixteen twenty three. Those are all US dollars. So the price is right. If you like what you see here and uh, listen carefully to my review, you know, this might be a knife that you want to get, uh, you know, a knife that you want to kick around, play with. Uh, I don't think you're going to want to make it your main EDC, but... Uh, who knows? It's totally up to you because each man can make up his own mind. Each woman can make up her own mind and, uh, you know, take your knife and do what you want with it, right? Let's talk about uh, what we have here. We've got a long, narrow handle, sort of Quaken style, like I said earlier. Stonewash blade. There's a little bit of a swedge kind of treatment going on right there on the spine. It's just a narrowing, a small narrowing of the blade. Hopefully it'll focus. There we go. So you can see right there how it narrows and then it comes back to the full width again. And then it comes down to the tip. Nice hollow grind here. So this knife easily clamps onto any system that you want to use to clamp on to sharpen um, or what have you. And hopefully, yeah, you can see it right there. You can see the skeletonizing in there, but I will take it apart and show you... Uh, well, I'll just take the handle scales off. Well, maybe I'll show you the, the ball bearings and everything. Uh, we'll see what I show you later on in the video. But we've got a little bit of a relief cut there on the liner so that it can be a sprung tension. So, in other words, the uh, liners are thicker than they needed to be. That's why they had to skeletonize them so much to get the weight down. And uh, lockup is pretty nice. I'll show you a close-up. I'll do that right now. I'll show you a close-up of the lockup. Lockup is pretty solid. Very, very tiny bit of blade play side to side. Barely perceptible. Some of you might say that there's none. Uh, up and down, there's no blade play. That's nice and solid. It's got one of those uh, nested stop pins. It's inside the uh, mechanism there, so you don't see a stop pin out here. Uh, no pillars here at all. You've got a backspacer back here. You can see how big it is. It's just large enough to be effective. And uh, the hole goes all the way through the uh, backspacer. So paracord just barely fits through there. It's just big enough for seven cord, uh, seven strand paracord to fit through there. You have to melt the end and you know, get it just right to be able to shove it through there, but it works. And I like the placement of the lanyard hole. That's very good. And then we've got a pocket clip there, um, and the placement's not as great for that. And the handle scales are easy to take off, 
just with two screws right there. And there's, and then there's other screws that hold the frame together, uh, back in here. <laughs> there's nothing in here, of course, because you can see it's open. Okay. So I'm thinking I did some cut tests with it and stuff. I'm thinking it's probably eight CR 13 MOV, something like that. I don't think it's that much. It's not much worse than that. It might be a seven CR 17, uh, which isn't quite as nice as an eight CR 13. It's not a terrible budget steel, but it's far from being a good budget steel either. It's just sort of a mediocre steel, uh, not too hard to sharpen. Uh, doesn't keep an edge particularly long, but it doesn't lose it super easily either. So hopefully that tells you something, but they don't tell us what the steel is. And I have yet to find a uh, CT Smart website to, to be able to communicate with them. Uh, if you know of a CT Smart website, you know, it's got a email address and everything aligned up with it. I really would like to contact them. Let me know either in the comment section below or email me directly at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. Uh, now for the blade, they've put in a little bit of a sharpener's choil there, but the plunge doesn't end before the choil does. And so it's, the steel is still very thick back here. So I didn't sharpen all the way to the end. I, I did sharpen this blade a little bit. So there's a little bit of the original edge cutting edge for the first, you know, three or four millimeters back here. And then it comes to my edge that I put on there. I would have had to grind down a little bit further here to get the entire thing uh, sharp. Uh, you can see it's a little wider here than it is at the end. So it's narrowing down all the way. The knife is fairly comfortable with any kind of grip you want to use. Uh, there's no problem with that kind of thing. Pinch grips, uh, you know, delicate kind of grips like that, your regular saber grip, fist grip, and of course, either reverse grip, either forward reverse or reverse reverse, you know, whatever. It works all quite well. And the handle scales, I don't know if you can see it very well on here. It's kind of challenging to get the picture just right. You can see it's got a bit of that scalloped look on that G10. And uh, that gives you a little bit extra texture. Not bad at all. As far as how it looks, I like how this knife looks. It looks really, it, it's, it's up my alley. Let's, let's put it that way. It looks good. Um, the, uh, screws are Torx and, you know, they're fairly good screws as far as I could find. Let's talk about the dimensions so that we can get into more details after that. Cutting edge 8.36 centimeters. That's 3.29 inches. Blade length, very much the same, 8.47 centimeters, 3.33 inches, a tiny bit longer than the edge. The uh, blade thickness is three and a quarter millimeters, that's 0.128 inches. The blade depth, two centimeters, that's 0.787 inches. The uh, thickness of the edge behind the grind, this is after I've sharpened it when I did my edge retention testing on it, is 0.65 millimeters. That's 0 0.0256 inches. So it's a little thicker than you'd like to have, especially on a hollow grind, but not so thick that it's really a problem at all. The uh, handle length is 12.2 centimeters, 4.8 inches. And then the grip area, just after that flipper tab to the end, uh, the grip area is 10 centimeters, 3.94 inches. The handle thickness is 1.5 centimeters. That's 0.59 inches. So a little over half of an inch thick here. The uh, handle depth, I measured it up here as its biggest here, and it keeps getting smaller closer to the end. Uh, 2.23 centimeters, that's 0.878 inches. And the entire length of this knife with the blade deployed is 21 centimeters, 8.27 inches. For a knife that weighs 125 grams, 4.35 ounces. So at under four and a half ounces, you've got a blade that's about three, yeah, a little over three and a quarter inches. Not bad. It looks pretty good and it feels pretty good. Uh, let me tell you about the prices. Uh, the prices are variable. There's three different prices for the four different colors right now. So the khaki and the orange are regular priced right now and they're a little bit more expensive. The black is less and this white one is the lowest. So it's not an expensive knife, uh, and 
that should tell you a little bit about the quality. This thing does have some problems. Uh, what do I, th overall, the fit and finish is fair. Not good, not great, not terrible. It's fair. Uh, it's got a nice shallow flipper that works. It's just got a little bit of jimping on it there. Very functional, so that's not a problem. The weight is good. Lockup is nice and solid. We already talked about that. The grip is good. Pocket clip, eh, it leaves a little bit too desired. You've got two centimeters. Ah, let's show it. You've got about two centimeters sticking out of the pocket, two centimeters worth of knife, about three quarters of an inch sticking out. So some guys don't mind that much. Some guys really dislike it. And that's what you have. The pocket clip at least is nice and small and it's very functional. There's no problem with that. It looks kind of weird that it's on an angle right there. I they could have put it on straight, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And that speaks to the fit and the finish. I don't think they meant to do it on an angle. I think it just sort of happened and worked out that way because of uh, not enough energy or thought put to the design work, I think. Um, and the skeletonizing in here is quite good. So I'm going to open this up now and show you some pictures of the insides, and then we'll talk about the cons. So there you go. You got to look at the ball bearings and the skeletonizing there. Now for the cons. One of the biggest is, if you take a look at this, you can, can't can see it this specific time. See how everything lines up on the back here? The blade, the spine of the blade comes very close. And since we've got basically a straight back blade, it is actually technically a tiny bit drop point here. Like very, very tiny bit. It should be more. And the problem is sometimes when you close it, it leaves a little bit exposed so that it can catch. Like if I run my fingers across here, uh, the little the little ridges on my fingertips catch and they get tore a little bit by the very tip of that knife. See, so if I use my fingernail, I can deploy the knife. Not every time, but... See? <laughs> so if you can deploy the knife with your fingernail going in there like that, that's a problem. So sometimes when it closes, it sticks out a little bit more than other times. And um, you shouldn't be able to open the knife like that with your finger. That's not very good. So what I'm going to do once I'm done recording this main part of the review, I'm going to uh, lock it up and I'm going to tape this around here quite a few times so it won't close on me uh, because I'm going to be filing it this way. If my hand is a stone, I'm going to be filing it uh, down to take this off and turn it into a little bit more of a drop point. It doesn't need much at all. It just needs, you know, maybe a millimeter or two taken off the tip just to take that down a tiny bit. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to show you how that looks. What are the cons on this knife? Well, I talked about that, the tip being unsafe. Um, other than that, one of the other cons is the length of the blade to the length of the handle ratio is a little bit off. Uh, it should have... For a blade that's like only three and a quarter inches, you know, the handle shouldn't be 4.8 inches. You know, there's a lot more handle here than there is cutting edge. And you can see it when I close it here that the tip is right there. And so I've got all of that knife left where there's, you know, it, the cutting edge should have been able to come like right close to the end there. And it takes a while for the cutting edge to start over here. So not enough cutting edge for the length of the handle. Not a big deal, but it's a small factor that it's there. Other than that, not too much else other than the things I've already covered. The fact that it's an unknown steel. I do like the different colors of the G10 that you can have. The stone wash is done quite well. The main hollow grind here is done okay. Although, you know, the plunge over here with the sharpener's toil, that region is a little bit off less than less than good enough it's just a little bit less than good enough so it works but it's just not quite good enough this wedge up here is a little bit odd you know it's kind of weird the way they did this so that's not a problem it's just you know a weirdness 
So there you go. Now, for the price, is it worth it? Well, if you're looking for a knife that you just want to bomb around with and play with and you want something narrow and thin like this, yeah, go for it. Uh, enjoy the knife to its full potential. But remember, it is exactly what I described it to be. It's just a merely okay knife at a good price. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.